Hello everyone, this is Simon. Welcome back to SocioScholar. In the previous lessons, we learned about the basics of functionalist social theory and classical evolutionism. Today I'm going to talk about the big fish of the functionalism tank and his ideas, Talcott Parsons, the American sociologist who had a big influence on social theory. Talcott Parsons was the kind of thinker who could take the chaos of human behavior and turn it into a neatly wrapped package of theories. So let's get down to business. As fundamental as functionalist thinking was to sociologists, until the mid-20th century, it appeared to be a somewhat scattered assembly of concepts and ideas. However, Talcott Parsons played a crucial role in turning functionalism into a way of thinking about society, into a theory that could explain all human behavior. He borrowed ideas from other thinkers like Spencer, Durkheim, and Freud to understand how societies work, how people interact, and how modern life shapes us. One of Parsons' key interests was a question posed by a philosopher named Thomas Hobbes. Hobbes wondered how we could live together in an orderly society when people are naturally self-focused. Parsons wanted to solve this puzzle within his own theory. To answer Hobbes' question, Parsons came up with a theory about how and why people act. He identified five parts to any action. The person doing it, the actor, what they want to achieve, the goal, how they plan to do it, the means, where and when they do it, situational conditions and the cultural rules or values that guide them, norms, values, and ideas. These elements form what Parsons called a unit act. According to him, every social system or society is made up of these unit acts, and these acts, guided by cultural rules or values, help society keep going the way it does. After World War II, Parsons' perspective expanded from just focusing on individual actions to exploring how big social structures like governments, religions, or societies as a whole shape how individuals behave. Parsons suggested that any interaction between humans involves four essential elements, the physical human body, the human mind or psychology, the social relationship between two or more people, and the culture that binds these interactions. Parsons went on and named these components as systems within society. He referred to the human body as the behavioral system, the mind as the personality system, the social relationships as the social system, and culture as the cultural system. Each system interacts and interpenetrates with the others in complex ways, influencing and being influenced by the rest. Parsons asserted that our shared culture guarantees a basic level of coherence within both our individual personalities and our social systems. It also ensures some level of connection between these two systems. This means that our culture helps to shape our identities and behaviors, and in turn, our interactions and social structures. In Parsons' theory, roles play a big part. A role is like a job or a part you play in society, such as a teacher or a parent, and with each role comes a set of rules or expectations. These roles make social life more predictable and ordered. For example, a teacher is expected to provide education, while parents are expected to care for their children. For Parsons, culture is important because it tells us how to act in our roles. It helps keep society working smoothly by setting out what is acceptable behavior for each role. If someone breaks these rules, there can be consequences, like people disapproving of their behavior or even formal punishment. Parsons also believed that during our childhood, we learned to accept these cultural rules as natural or the way things are. This process is called socialization. So, as a child learns to say please and thank you, according to Parsons, they are internalizing cultural norms that guide behavior, and by accepting and following the cultural rules related to our roles, we help keep society running smoothly. So, that would be my short lesson on how Parsons systematized functionalist thinking, but this was just part one. There is one more lesson coming up about Talcott Parsons and his structural functionalism. See you soon!